Hi, I'm Josh Vanderay. Here we are to talk Ansible for network automation, and today we're getting to know Ansible. At the end of the session, you, you'll be able to know more about the origins of Ansible, which will help you understand how Ansible works in structures. We'll know about inventory files and how to put them together. We're going to understand Ansible playbook structure that includes tasks, plays, playbooks, and what are roles. And then we're going to take a look at the debug module, a little bit more that's going to be very helpful for your playbook development. And then we're going to look at the key connection variables that you need to know for Ansible, such as Ansible user and Ansible password. And then we're going to take a look at the GitHub and Galaxy pages, so that way you know where you can find more roles and also get help for Ansible. Ansible's origins go back to managing Linux hosts. This was a competitor to the Chef and Puppet days where they were doing agent-based management of Linux nodes. Ansible came along and was an agentless effort at being able to do so. Agentless meant that there was a control node that would SSH into each of the managed nodes. That is where I believe the network automation community has really caught on to leveraging Ansible for its SSH and lack of agents. And then when we look at the structure of Ansible, it looks to leverage sports analogies for the structure. We have individual tasks that take care of doing things at the what is being done one at a time. Those tasks get rolled up into a play, and then you have multiple plays that form the playbook to tell what is going to happen. We introduced briefly roles, and what roles are is the idea of taking all the information that you need for a leaf switch and applying that in a playbook for, for the leaf switches, but you might also want to take and apply nexus switches or a particular spine switch config. You can do things such as nexus switches, WAN routers, etc. It's a set of plays that help define what is within a role. Let's start taking a look at some inventory files. And the first thing we're going to take a look at here is that we have a local and local host at the very top. These are implied and do not necessarily need to be on here, but I've put them on here for the demonstrations that I'm looking to cover here. Going down a little bit further, we see iOS and square brackets. iOS is the group name that we'll be using to be able to reference all of these devices. You can reference devices by groups, or you can do individual hosts as we go down this path as well. So here we see we have R1, R2, R3. Those are the actual hosts. And then we define their Ansible underscore host, which is their address that you will actually connect to. If you have a DNS entry for these that the node can talk to, you will not need to put in Ansible underscore host for that. But since it's a lab environment that we're going to be working in, all of my variables will have that host entry in there. As we continue further on down, we see iOS colon vars. The colon indicates that this is going to be some other separator. So you can have vars, you can have a few other things as well, but vars is the predominant thing that we'll look to use. And we'll see an example of children in a little bit as well. Here for the variables that will be applied to R1, R2, and R3, we'll set the Ansible underscore network underscore OS to iOS. Moving on to a little more complex inventory file, we're going to see that we've added another implicit group here, the all group. We have children underneath the all where we're defining iOS. We see here our local and local host as well. Going further down, iOS is defined and has no hosts in it, but iOS does have some children that we can see here of routers and switches. The children themselves for the groups routers and switches will inherit the variables here of Ansible network underscore OS being iOS and Ansible underscore user being Cisco, unless they're overwritten by vars of the children group. Continuing, we see the first child of routers, which is what we move things into. So we see our R1, R2, and R3 defined. Then we have our next group of switches, where we have switch one. It's going to have a host of 10.0.0.5. The variables here, we have one user of Ansible underscore user, which is going to be used instead of the username of Cisco that we see up on iOS on the parent. So that is a little bit of how inventories are built, and these can become quite deep as you do various groups and nesting. Let's take a look at a few playbooks. We're going to take a look at the file playbook structure. First thing that you need to know about any playbook for Ansible is that this is a YAML file. You can see at the very top here that there is a definition of the three dashes on the top, dash, dash, dash. Then we break things up in, within the playbook into plays. So here we've got our first play definition, play one. It's got a connection of local. We're going to have gather facts set to no. So gather facts gathers facts about the machine that the playbook is running on. In the instance here, since we're running this on our control node, we don't need to know facts about it. This is usually more helpful in the Linux world and most Ansible playbooks for networking is we set that to no. And we'll take a look later at the Ansible config file to show how you can set that so you don't need to actually set gather facts to no here. Become. We're not going to become anything, so this is where you would 
if you want to go to sudo. And in the network world, we'll see a little bit in some future playbooks where we do want to become, and that's going to be how we enable. So if you have a device where you're SSHing it to first, and then you need to go into enable mode, this is the method you'll have here. You'll have become set to no, and become underscore method will be set to enable. You'll see that a little bit later in the courses here. The host, we have a local host. Tags is something that you can find interesting if you want to run a playbook against or certain plays a little bit further down against your particular device. So we have two tags here that we're defining Google and Cloudflare. When we take a look, we'll be able to ping just Google. Or do we want to take a look at Cloudflare? Or do we ping all of them? Next up is VARs. VARs are variables and can be used at the play level or at the playbook level or even at the task level as well. Here we're setting a var that's going to be used at the play level. That's going to be my underscore first underscore var. And we're just saying that to ignition. Continuing down here, we have our tasks then. If you remember back to the beginning about tasks, this is the smallest unit, each individual item what's being done. The first task, we have task number one defined, and we ping that out to address, we're pinging our loopback, 127.0.0.1. We're going to use the shell module here that's going to run just locally on the Linux host or your Mac that's running, and it's going to ping 127.0.0.1, dash C for a count of three. If you don't put the dash C here, the ping will continue to run until the command timeout default variable gets hit. Then we're going to register that ping output. That register is doing a variable registration, so we can see that information a little bit later. Task two, all we're doing is printing the result of that output, so we'll take a look at what that looks. Continuing down into play two, we're going to go ahead and ping Cloudflare when the tag is set to Cloudflare. So again, we see our connection, gather facts, become host, and then our tags here. We only see Cloudflare. Moving on, the tasks here, we're pinging 1.1.1.1 in the shell module and registering that to a new variable Cloudflare underscore ping. We're going to print that result and then play three is much the same that we're pinging Google DNS instead. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how this playbook runs. We're calling Ansible dash playbook that gets installed by however method of installation that you've done. And then we're doing playbook underscore structure two YAML file. So we're going through the first play. We're pinged our local host. Now we've gone ahead and pinged Cloudflare and Google because we did not set any tags. If you want to set some tags to see how this is run, we use a dash dash tags and then we'll go ahead and just tag Google. So we ping our local host and then we move on and we only ping Google. And we'll just do Cloudflare as well and we'll see what that looks like in that we're only pinging the addresses that we define. Let's take a look at a playbook that I've put together to re investigate reserved variables a little bit more or the connection variables. We have our first play and only play here. Some of the differences I'm going to highlight is the connection has moved to network underscore CLI, so we'll be using the network connection to connect to a network device. And then we have a become method shown here of enable. So this is what you would set to be able to go to enable mode. Our first task then will get NTP associations. The second one, we're going to just take a look at the Ansible underscore user. And then task three, we're taking a look at Ansible password. And the fourth one, we're going to go ahead and see the actual NTP association. So let's go ahead and take a look at that playbook run. So Ansible playbook, playbook reserved vars two. And then we're going to specify a username to be using here. I've got another credential set up of packet for the username. So dash u indicates a user. Dash k is going to say, I want a prompt for my SSH password. And then dash capital K asks for the enable or the become password. So we'll put in pushers here for the SSH password. Become password, since it's going to be the same and we don't really even need it, we'll leave that the same. But now we go through our playbook and we see the execution run that we see task one, it connects, gets in TEP associations. Task two, we print out the user, which is packet. And spell password then is pushers. And that's the credential used to, to log into this device and show the NTP associations. Now that we've taken a look at how Ansible playbooks are structured, if you want to learn more about roles, and we haven't really covered roles specifically, but there are a host of various items available by the community at galaxy.ansible.com. This is where you will find various things to be able to do installs. For instance, Jenkins is one item that has a role that if you use that, will automatically install Jenkins onto a server for you. One of the roles I like to use frequently within Ansible networking is the network engine role 
here. This is put on by Ansible's network area and it is a wonderful tool to leverage and to learn about. Now taking a look at where you can find help and more information about Ansible. If you use Bing or Google to get to Ansible space GitHub, you'll come likely to this page. Here you can see the source code that is actually out in production. You can click on issues if you'd wish to submit an issue or to check to see if your problem you're already having is already reported as an issue. I've definitely seen a few out there previously and waited for the bug to get resolved. You can see the pull requests, items that are waiting for being pulled into the master branch for GitHub. And then also you can see the items that are being worked on. We can see our 2.9 post beta fire drills that they're working on. Ansible 2.10 is already in the works and they're testing collections. All right, to review what we've accomplished so far today, we took a look at the playbook structure that include tasks, plays, playbooks, and we briefly talked about roles and we'll look at roles much later down the path. And then we took a look at the use of the debug module to be able to look at the automation. So this is where we printed out various things. You'll want to use print much more and keep an eye out where we use debug to see what's going on. Then we took a look at Ansible key connection variables, such as Ansible underscore user and Ansible password. And then lastly, we reviewed Ansible's Galaxy and GitHub pages where you can find more information. Mm -hmm.